What is going on YouTube? This is a clam sheepdog here today and I'm going to be reviewing the Smith & Wesson M&P Shield. Now first we're going to safety check the gun. Of course it is unloaded. Now this is from the Smith & Wesson's M&P line. This is their single stack and it comes in a 9mm or 40. I obviously chose the 9mm. It's very slim. It's perfect for concealed carry. Um, this gun is very well known and uh, a lot of people have carried it and it, we'll just jump right into specs here. Of course the caliber is 9mm. It comes with a standard seven and eight round mag clip of course you got your uh, extension here longer grip on it now a lot of people have been taking these off you can take this off and when you seat the mag You've been uh, people have been known to do internal damage, so I'm just gonna keep this on. But anyway, getting back into specs for this gun, it is of course striker fired. The barrel length is 3.1 inches, and the front sight is a white dot, and the rear sight is a white dot. So that is your sight picture right there. Of course, you have a poly polymer frame, and uh, the barrel finish is a 68 HRC finish, and it's they say the trigger pull comes 6.5 pounds from the factory. So, this is your trigger pull. People say this trigger is gritty. I don't have a problem with it. Uh, 6.5 is a little heavy. I plan on doing a trigger kit on it, but I'm kind of hesitant at being a concealed carry weapon. Um, the sight radius is 5.3 inches. The overall height is 4.6 inches. The frame width is 0.95. Okay. And of course, this does have the loaded chamber indicator on it. And, um, <clears throat> as you can see, well, that's just a random critical duty, but anyway, I'm trying out the new American Gunner, 115 grain, by Hornady, 115 grain XTP, this was new from last year. And I'm just going to try it out. I prefer um, Federal HST, but we all know how impossible that is to find. So, um, and of course, um, the Smith, Smith & Wesson M&P Shield cannot take um, plus P rounds. M&P, well, Smith & Wesson does not recommend it, and so I'm not going to do it. And of course, this is the model with the safety. No big deal to me. Um, and also, you should know that the Smith & Wesson M&P shields have been known for the mag release button for the backside of it to rust because it has metal in the mag behind the mag release button supporting it. So um, just make sure you keep an eye on that. It um, you should. It won't happen down the road. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen right away. So if if you wear it after a nice sweaty day, it, that's when it should happen. That's when it should pop up. You'd have to send it back and they take it out and clean it. And I don't know if they just was using a cheap steel, but this is a new version. So I don't know if this will happen with that. But anyway... I'm going to move this, by the way, Alien 
Ganglier Cloak Tuck 3.0. Very nice. All neoprene backing. Love it. And of course, multi holsters. I found this on Amazon. It's a spare mag carrier, of course. in right and it does have adjustment screws this is a 1.5 inch clip I like I said I found this on Amazon so you guys definitely want to look these guys up they do have a website just multiholsters.com but they do have Amazon and they are available for prime shipping so if you want to go check them out you can get two day shipping with that with your prime so my uh, full metal jackets I'm using is uh, blazer brass no problems with those so far um, I only bought these because as you can see These are on sale for ten ninety eight, so why not? And uh, if they turn to be successful, could be a nice target run. Cause they're cheap and uh, they work. Why not? So we're gonna move everything out of the way. Go into breaking down and cleaning of the gun. So, we're going to double check and make sure the gun's clear again before we go messing with everything. But um, this is the breakdown process. Lock, lock it open. By the way, this gun will be very stiff when you first get it. So, um, be aware of that. There's nothing wrong with the gun. It, it is just very stiff. So anyway, <clears throat> on all MMPs, the break two breakdown methods are the same. So um, hold on. This is same as there. It has the sear deactivation lever. Let me see. I can get that to show you. Push it down. See how it's now down. Just we'll mess that right up. Okay, sear lever still down. Push this lever down. Just like that. Push the lever down. Come right off. Okay. Pull this. Pull the barrel out. This is fairly new, so not much carbon or anything like that, but that's put that back in there and I will show you how to put it back together slide it on like that it open again then uh, use your mag to push up that sear button it's downloaded see 
trigger resets. That it did. Okay, so I'm gonna take this down again. So I can show you the lubrication points. I know the gun's unloaded, so I'm just gonna do it the old fashioned way. These points right here. You lube these side rails right there where the wear point is. There's four of these that you lube. One, two, three, four. Okay. Then you put a little dab right here on top of the trigger bar. See that? Then take this out for you again. Put one on the top of the barrel here. Then you lube right here. Right here. Right here. Then, so there's two on the barrel. And five on. What's going on, guys? Sorry about that. The camera just stopped recording. But anyway, like I was saying, there's seven lubrication points. I'm Right now I'm using the Hops 9, but I've just put in an order for the breakthrough um high purity oil i heard the grease is good too but i'm gonna try the oil out just for now maybe i'll try that out later but anyway what this gun can be used for i'm using it for concealed carry self-defense can this be you carried as an ankle gun Yeah, I don't know because it does weigh 19 ounces that is a little heavy but that heavy that heaviness comes out in accuracy this is a very accurate gun <clears throat> so you risk mobility for the accurate I mean this you can consider this a combat gun I mean you ain't gonna go into combat with a Glock 42 or Glock 43 this is a combat size gun this is what you want 9 millimeter. it's a sufficient caliber for self defense for uh, a lot of law enforcement, a lot of people are switching over to it. I mean, you can't get this in a 40. Uh, the weight difference won't be that bad. I mean, I didn't get the 40 because um, I didn't like the snappiness of this being in a 9, even though that it does weigh 19 ounces. The 40 is just too snappy for me. And um, I actually plan on buying the majority of my guns in 9mm because it's... I guess you could say more economical. But, ankle gun, I don't know. This gun does ride nice in a shoulder holster, though. Very, very concealable gun for a single, for the its size. I mean, it is a slight single stack nine millimeter or you can get in for you like i said but this camera don't do it justice of just how slim this gun really is you have to see one in in real life to just understand it but when you get this gun in your hand you will fall in love with it unless you're a fanboy of course I am no fanboy. I love Smith and Wesson. I love Glock. I love Keltec. 
plan on buying plenty of Glocks. I plan on buying plenty of Caltex. More MMPs. But anyway, let's talk about sites for this. Sites are out there. You can get um, tritium night sites. Um, should you call and make some? They're want to say $105. Don't quote me on that. They have like a yellow slash green that type coloration. Where um, this right here, the front sight is green yellow that's safety neon color then the orange that's painted orange but it has a tritium i guess you could say needle through it then these are just night sights i haven't seen them in real life but also no true glow makes sights for them i've seen those for 